Well, hi. <clears throat> Welcome to our third lecture series on um, HTML5. This is the HTML5 lecture series at SNHU. I'm Tom Adamson, visiting professor, and we're, lecture 03 is on web standards. And, but tell me what you think. We did this last time, right? <clears throat> the hat? How's that? How about the profile? New profile. Looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to talk about web standards. In other words, for HTML5, for HTML5, who makes the rules? And you should know this. The reason why you should know this is because if you understand how the standards are made for HTML5, you may want to get involved in a process yourself and make recommendations. And hey, this is important. So it, it's very important that we understand who makes the rules. Well, first of all, who makes the rules? It is not any one government. Here's the government right here. And we'll put a dome on it because most government think buildings have a dome. And so it is not a government. They don't make the rules for HTML5 or for anything else to do with HTML. So we can put a circle around here and cross it like that, right? Okay, not the government. And since it's not the government, we'll put a policeman here like this. And let's say he's, he's blowing a whistle, zeet, to stop you and what have you because your browser doesn't work correctly and he's pointing at you here and he's going, hey, the police, there are no web police. Okay, so we can cross that out too. So who makes the rules? It's not government, it's not the web police. Who makes sure you follow the rules? I'll tell you who it is. It's this right here. That's who makes the rules. Nobody. And you might say, wait a minute. If nobody makes the rules, how is it that there's any standards at all? Well, here's what happens. And I'm referring to my notes. Have you ever seen my notes? This is, these are my notes. Very academic, right? OK, so there is no such thing on the web as you, you must, OK? There is mostly you may if you want to. And this, this is information that goes to people who make browsers. You, you may if you want to. <clears throat> and what these are, these aren't rules. There's an organization that comes out. And what they do, they don't make rules. They make recommendations. Now, what are the things about recommendations? Recommendations are, well, I recommend that you do such and such. So if somebody hears a recommendation, they can say, well, I don't think I want to do that. Okay? It's not that you better do it or you're going to go to jail. No, it's simply a recommendation. We'll advertise a little bit of Starbucks coffee here. Uh, that's very good. All right, so who is it that does this? All right, here it is. Who does it? and how they do it, and how could you be involved in that process? And why do they do it? And how long does it take them to do it? And where are they? You know? They are the world, whoops, this is running out of ink here. Let me try this one here. The world, or LB, wide, Web Consortium, C-O-N, I'm going to have to look up the spelling to make sure I get it right, or I'll get all kinds of emails on this. Where 
is it? I have it on the next. Yes, 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 yes. C O N S O R T um, I U M. I think I got this stuff. Uh, T I U M. Yes. Now the key word is what's consortium? They're World Wide Web Consortium, and it's abbreviated. It's abbreviated this way. It is W three. C. Does that sort of make sense? W3C for World Wide Web Consortium. And actually their web their website is w3c.org. And you should go there and visit and see all the cool stuff that they do that. Well let's let's see what a consortium is. And I'm going to give you the formal definition of a consortium because it's important. It's important that we understand how consortium work. Um, a consortium is participation, participation in a common activity to achieve a common goal. And basically how it's structured, it is two or more companies like private-for-profit companies uh, organizations could be other organizations. Uh, could be some governments. Could be universities. Or any combination of this. So the W3C is a group of two or more companies, organizations, governments, uh, universities, uh, or any combination that are participating in a common activity to achieve a common goal. At last count, at last count, the World Wide Web Consortium had 377 members, member organizations. Now, these organizations are, you might guess, one of them is Microsoft, another one is IBM, another one is Sun Microsystems, another one is Google, so on and so on for 377, all of them have an equal vote. And all of them are meeting all the time yep. and in order to make uh, what would, are going to become recommendations for what the latest web standards should be. Now, nobody has to follow them. They're simply recommendations. Okay. Let's talk about what the W3C's most important work is. All right what they're most important. So you got this World Wide Web Consortium, W3C.org, uh, all these companies participate in common activity to achieve a common goal. Okay. And they're doing it year round. Okay. This right here, where's my pen? Here's my pen. This is the W3C's most important work. 
And if you understand this, this should be up on a billboard, what their most important work is. It should have flashing lights all around it, like this. Big billboard, okay? And all these lights are flashing. Beep, 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 flash, flash, flash. More here. And then all kinds of people should be looking at this. See what this is. This person's looking at it. And he's going, wow, that's so cool. Here's another person uh, right here that's looking at this. They're saying, wow, wow, that's so cool. And so on. And what it is, is it's the development of web specs, web specifications that describe uh, web protocols a, a web protocol is like HTML. There's other web protocols too, but we're focused on HTML, Hypertech Markdown Language. And other building UILD, ING blocks of the web. Okay, so the W3C's most important work is the development of web specifications that really come out as recommendations that describe web protocols like HTML, like how it's going to work, and, and other uh, building blocks of the web. Okay. So that's what it's going to do. All right, now, let's see what else. We've got a few more things to cover here, and then we'll wrap this up. Let's talk about the one and only law of the web. Okay, The one and only law. We said there was no laws. Yeah, but there is. There's one. There's one very important law. And it's important that all of you understand it so that you don't get it taken away. Okay, The one and only one law of the web. And here it is, right here. The one and only one law of the web. This should be pointed out with arrows. Again, flashing lights. One and only one important law of the web. No single person, organization, or government shall have control of the web. This you should make as a sign and post it in your work area. If you're doing HTML5 stuff or any web stuff, that should be a sign that's right over your desk. So you make sure that you have the right to keep it that way. Nobody's in charge of the web. It's nothing more than a bunch of recommendations made by all kinds of member organizations, the W3C. Okay, now, let's look at, let me get my next page here. As usual, they're stuck together. Okay. Let's see, let's see what kind of members belong to this. See what kind of members belong to this. See if you love to be in an organization that would fit and that could go and give input to this uh, to the W3C. Let's see. 
this is my pen here, this one's out of ink. Okay. First of all, you have software vendors. We talk about those. Okay, Microsoft and so on. We also have uh, content providers. Those are other organizations that belong to it. We also have uh, corporate users. I don't know this is a fact, but I would guess that some of the large major corporations also belong, like Standard Oil and so on. Uh, we have telecom companies belong to it. We also have uh, academic institutions. Belong to it. We also have um, research laboratories. Like CERN. We also have a standards body, other standards body. So there's no conflict in the standard recommendations. And we do have government organizations. However, they have an equal vote with all these other, other folks. So these are the kinds of folks that make up the 377 uh, membership uh, for the uh, W3C. The W3C is hosted at three major universities. One uh, for the USA, South and Central America is, as you would expect, uh, MIT, that's for the US. Uh, the other is the uh, French National Research Institute. And this takes care of, of things in Europe. And then the other one is Keio, K-E-I, University. In uh, Japan. And this, of course, takes care of Asia. So it's not that you, the U.S. is given priority over this. All parts of the world are allowed to participate. And, and uh, companies from all over these different, from the Asian theater, from Europe and what have you, also participate as, a, as an equal voting member. Now, let's say, okay, you have all this, and they've done all this work, and they made all these recommendations. Now the recommendations are out there. So what happens? Well, here's what happens. This is important because they're recommendations. They're, think, they're not things you have to do. Okay. It's now up to the developers of different uh, web browsers to implement these recommendations. They can or cannot implement them. If they don't want to, then we're not going to do it. First of all, uh, it's up to the developers. Let's have a look at the developers here. Um, what are the browsers that follow the W3C recommendations? Okay. 
What are they? Okay, let's have a look. What are the browsers that do that? Do you know? Well, first of all, there's Internet Explorer. Which, of course, is uh, this was introduced uh, by Microsoft. in uh, 1995. The other one that we have is Firefox. Okay. And Firefox is from Mozilla. And it was introduced in 2004 from the ashes of Netscape. Netscape is a browser that was out uh, for quite some time that unfortunately didn't make the big time. So that's why it's in the ashes. The other is Google Chrome. And that browser was introduced by Google um, back in 2008. And the other is uh, Safari. And Safari is the default browser for Apple. Fault browser for Apple. And the other is Oprah. Opera, Oprah. And that right there is a lightweight browser that's pre preferred for handheld devices. Now, it's up to these different companies that make these browsers as to what of the W3C recommendations they want to adapt. Uh, generally, generally, Internet Explorer by Microsoft is the last one to adopt them. They, generally, what they want to do is they want to do their own thing and hope it will catch on. And generally what happens, they do their own thing and it really doesn't catch on. So then they start adapting the standards. Uh, as, as at the time of this lecture, Google Chrome is the one that has adapted most of the standards and followed uh, uh, by Safari. They both use the same kind of driving engine Google and Safari does. Uh, Firefox comes in close and, and uh, Opera comes in close. Uh, Internet Explorer right now, in terms of the market for browsers, uh, has about 12.7% uh, of the market. And this is as of May uh, 2013. And they're dropping. They used to have close to 80% of the internet market. But my own, per my own personal opinion is because they're slow to pick up uh, W3C standards, they've lost a lot of customers. Firefox has about 27.9% of the total browser market. Google Chrome has 52 0.7% of the total browser market. And this, this is increasing. This right here for my Internet Explorer is decreasing, and the others are picking up the slack. Apple Safari has about 4% of the total browser market, and Oprah has about 1.7% of the total browser market. So, the thing about these is all of these companies here that make these different browsers, they're all members of the W3C along with a bunch of other people. 
And so it's in their interest to make recommendations that benefit them, but it's also in their interest to apply those standards. As you can see, Google Chrome is one of the first to start applying the recommendations or standards. Apple generally, I mean Microsoft generally, is the last one. Okay, that's it uh, for this lecture. Thank you very much for watching.